All right, you're welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching today's business. And now we're going to the meat of the matter, which is food security and the impending food crisis that is being forecast by experts in the agri sector. This time around, we will be looking at it from the perspective of a farmer. And on the phone, we have Gift Udo, founder of Norino Farms, speaking to us all the way from River State. Good day, Gift. Thanks for joining us on today's business. Hello, good afternoon. How is River State this morning? Good, it's raining again. It's good. All right, let's go into, let's dive into the conversation straight up. Um, do you have a passion for um, food safety and security, which brings um, the interest to what, uh, what you have to do here today? Now, let's talk about, first of all, the, the experience you had as a farmer during the pandemic. What was it like for you during the lockdown, the whole issue of people not having so much income to spend and the rest of them? What was your experience like? Okay. It was a really tough one, considering the fact that we are an organization that is trying to reduce those poverty losses and agrochemical poisoning. So um, at first, we, it was very hard for us to get seeds to plant. And then I discovered that because I work with farmers, though, to um, help them reduce agrochemical poisoning and um, post harvest losses. So it was really hard with the market lockdown. It was really hard for us to sell produce from the farm. So the farmers were, like, post-harvest losses actually increased with the lockdown and the COVID-19 situation and lockdown of the markets. The post-harvest losses increased, and we, they had nowhere to sell. So we actually had to step in and help them. There was, really like, the rate of poverty increased, crime rates, like, people were not even getting um, money to buy food for themselves. They were not able to sell, because most of the people, they live on, like, daily income. They were not able to sell, so they were unable to get what to eat. So we had to step in to help them sell their produce. We used social media platform, our social media platforms to help them sell their produce online. So we just did like a farmer to consumer kind of system to help them sell. And this would definitely have affected the sales and um, even distribution and as well as revenue, right? Yes. Yes, so, it, so talk it, to it, us it, about that. I mean, you should have set a goal for yourself that, oh, at the end of 2020, this is the amount of money that I should have made. But, well, no thanks to COVID-19. Um, definitely you, you and some of your other farmer colleagues would have fallen short of the target. Talk to us about, about that. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll start with this week because um, when we, we, we talk about food security, we want to be able to achieve food security. We need to talk about going into the use of hybrid seedlings. So um, I actually introduced hybrid seedlings to seeds and seedlings to the farmers, and they are beginning to embrace it. And then COVID-19 just came, and we are unable to even assess these seeds, because most of the seeds we use are imported. So we are unable to get these seeds to plant. So that's just number one. You're talking about farming, and you don't even have input to use to plant. So it really affected our revenue. If you are uh, unable to get the seeds to plant, how, how then do you even let, get the seeds to grow and then you make, you make some money, like a generation of some revenue for your business? So it really, it really affected us like um, so much because the, now this is the rainy season and this is when things actually become cheaper. During the dry season, um, a bag of cocoa was at um, 7,000 naira, but right now it goes for 1,500 naira. So look at the fact that you don't even have good inputs to plant so that you can get high yield. So it really, it's, it really affected us in like so many ways. And we're, we're unable to get inputs. We're also unable to sell the little that we could plant. So we had we had very high hopes, targets. We wanted to meet, like get more farmers on board. We wanted to increase the number of farmers that we work with. To about 300, but right now we are like we are still just there, like, trying to make like get things to work out for us in the um, side of production and sales and even getting of seeds. So we we have re really done like we are instead of improving, we have just been at that like just been trying to get things, make things to happen. At just where we were at last year, instead of working on the plans that we have, we're just trying to. Let me say, we're just trying to survive. Instead of trying to 
work on the plants and we have like increasing our revenue, getting more farmers and getting them to plant more and um, kind of crops. We are right now we're just trying to survive, like tell, do do what we have, like use what we have right now to just make and All right, gift. Um, I, I want to I want you to talk about sourcing for these seeds, but before that, speaking of revenue, which has been drastically affected, um, no thanks to the pandemic, the CBN released some funds for uh, for those in the agri sector, including SMEs as well. Did any of your farmer colleagues or yourself apply for those funds, and, and has any of them gotten it yet? Okay, so um, I did apply, but some of my farmer colleagues did, but. None of them have been able to get it yet till now. I've not been able to get it. Like, I actually introduced it to them and told them about um, some of the loans that are available, like COVID-19 um, loans that are available. And they all they applied, and to date, they have not been able to get anything on that. So it's just been follow-up after follow-up, follow-up after follow-up. So, like, some of them are even beginning to give up on the whole process because we have not been able to get any kind of relief. We need um, funds for COVID-19 at all. We have not been able to. Well, this conversation with you has opened our eyes to so many issues that is uh, bedeviling um, the agricultural sector, specifically the production, those who are actually farming. Let's talk about seed sourcing. You mentioned earlier on that some of these seeds are being imported um, from, other, from other climes. Can't we have these seeds, you know, produced here? Can't we have them here? so that it will be cheaper to sell those seeds to other farmers that would make use of it? In Ami River State and in Kano, we actually have, we have, actually have this like a, a seed for change platform. There's a platform where like um, investors um, from the Netherlands and from some other countries come in to help the vegetable production sector in Kano, in the north. Like they bring, they, they are able to produce seeds that are specific to the weather there. So that's why they are able to get more yield. But like, they, but we we had a meeting and I and I was I raised, I actually raised this question. And I asked, why are we unable to bring this here? So they talk about the cost, the cost of producing in Nigeria. To be more like they said, they are, they are no structure because there was actually a representative from um, the Netherlands, from a seed company in the Netherlands. So he said that it's just the structure here in Nigeria. Even if they, if they produce here in Nigeria, it will cost them more wow. compared to when they send it here. So I think that we need to, there, there needs to be structure to help people come in, seed producing companies to come into Nigeria and produce. And then they say, oh, and our farmers willing to embrace this new technology. If we bring this shit, will they even buy from us? That's just another challenge. The farmers embracing the new seeds that will help them to produce more. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a very cogent point and it's something that um, those in the helm of affairs need to look, look, look out for and do as well. I mean, why should producing the seeds here be so expensive? Well, that's a question that needs to be answered. Now, let's talk about the issue of um, storage. Let's talk about the issue of storage. You mentioned earlier on that you had some of your goods perished, and that is one challenge that has been hitting the agri sector for quite a long time. Before you move your goods, your vegetables, your tomatoes from Kano to Nigeria to Lagos, practically half of them, you know, would have gone bad. So, talk about the challenges you guys have when it comes to storage and probably the way forward as somebody who is actually in the industry. Okay, so, um, so harvest losses is actually something that I think we have, we have actually been working on and trying to work on to average by, like right now, what we currently do is try to sell more, like harvest on order. Like when someone um, orders, we go ahead to harvest. So it doesn't, when we have this, we don't start looking, we don't get stranded while looking for a market to sell. So um, it's actually a challenge. Like the method we use now is just the harvest of other methods. So, but going forward, we think we're currently working, actively working on a working storage facility um, where we can, where we can harvest and then store in the storage facility. And farmers, local farmers can actually come in to store their vegetables for a fee. So this is what we are currently we are currently 
actively working on. It's, um, um, we have been doing this like a private sector. We have not. Um, it's just something I am very passionate about. So um, I'm doing it like with my team as a private, in private in the private sector. So this is just what we want to want want to do. Like, and I I think I got I got this whole. I got the idea of a working school story when I, I, I actually visited the US and I, I saw how they were able to build low cost storage facility, even on farms. Like, you see a, a family farm, they have the storage facility, cold storage, low cost storage facility. So, I think I, I want to replicate that, replicate that here in Nigeria for the farmers so they can walk in and just store their, store their produce for a fee, like a, a very low fee. And Let's just keep working using our harvest on other method until that comes. Mm, gifts. Finally, finally, future of future of everything, future of everything. What do you see ahead for the agri sector post COVID nineteen? What do you see ahead? Okay. Um I think that for personally I see food security, personally, because and this whole, the COVID-19 has really opened a lot of people's eyes to see agriculture as something that they should go into. A lot of people are actually going into agriculture. And I've been getting a lot of requests. I needed to consult for me. I needed to consult for me. What do you think? What part of agriculture do you think I can invest in? But it, it wasn't like that. Like, when you tell someone you are a farmer, they look at you like, what is she talking about? But recently, a lot of people are beginning to venture into agriculture, even at the, at the back of their house, they just want to do something. They want to try to produce something that they can use to feed their family. So I think I, I see food security because a lot of people are now getting interested in agriculture because of this pandemic. Because they know that um, everybody needs to eat, no matter um, how, even if you don't want to put on the generator, you don't want to do anything in your house, but you have to eat. So this is why a lot of people are now getting interested in agriculture. Yes, and I would like to add that one of the, um, the things that we experienced during the COVID-19 situation was well, um, when, during, when we were trying to sell was that I think our sales actually increased with the pandemic. Sales increased because with the market, markets were shut down, so the sales actually increased. Because a lot of people started to order, like started to order, depend on ordering online. So it's something that even if Nobody wants to go out and buy stuff outside, but they know that no matter what, they have to eat, so they have to invest. They have to go into agriculture. They have to invest in it. So I see food security at post-COVID-19. Thank you so much for your contribution, um, Gift Udo. Um, she's the founder of Norina Farms. Um, yes. Founder Narina Farms, thank you so much for your contribution, um, for giving us your perspective on the issue of food security in Nigeria. We do hope your points have been noted and um, the people responsible for making agriculture soar in Nigeria will do what it takes to make it happen. Thank you so much for that, Narina.